because you because your our perception is based off of two vantage points that are integrated in the brain. We can use aspects of that aspects aspects of the visuals inherent in that that are presented to our conscious mind if we pay attention to them. We can use those as a measuring tool to lift space directly from seeing it and to thereby create a rendering that matches the, the experience of space, the human experience of space. Um, and that, probably, that sounds more complicated than it actually is. Um, I'm sure you've noticed that if you look past something, you can cause it to split in a double. Yeah. And that's just because your your sight lines are not converging there. They're, they're, like if, like if you're if you're focusing on me, right. you'll see two sure. blue bottle caps. Sure. And then if you see if you focus on the bottle cap, you'll see two of me. Yeah. And the, it, uh, your your sight lines can only converge in one place and throughout the, all of this area. Um, and and so theoretically and and actually you're seeing double of everything else, but you don't really you, know, you don't really it see it as a register. Um, but we figured out that by registering, by looking past something and registering the split double image, you could use that to make a tracing of it. You could use that to make an optical tracing. Um, not following that because when I look at the drawing, I don't see a double image. He's seeing a double image. When, when he's looking past the edge of the paper, he's seeing that paper split over into, into a double ghost image and making a tracing. I, I'm going to show you a picture of how it looks. Well, I, actually, first, try Try doing this with your hand. Like, look past the edge of your hand. Mm -hmm. You see your hand going. Into I that. know exactly what you're talking about now because sometimes when I shoot, my brain gets so tired, like from squinting my eye, that I'll yeah. or I'm looking at action that's going to be happening, and I need to trigger at the exact moment. Yeah. And so I'll be watching and looking through the viewfinder at the same time, and so I'm actually seeing two yeah. different versions of the same thing. Totally. And your camera appears to be a little transparent, probably. Right. Yeah. Totally. Totally. So, but so this is just a way of utilizing that phenomenon mm -hmm. to place a pen on the edge of the sheet of paper, mm -hmm. and then look past it. You cause your paper and your pen to divide into this double, mm -hmm. and you can see a transparent margin. It's only it's less than the separation of your two eyes. Sure. It, 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 it's, it, it's the separation of your sight lines as they cross through the paper plane. Mm -hmm. You can see that portion of it to be transparent, mm -hmm. and your floating pen tip can like go on top of the, your so eyeball. So he's actually tracing. He's what actually he's seeing. Yeah, he's tracing. But but he can he, he can only trace one vertical margin at a time, which is why we're doing it in these columns. Um, once once that's completed, we'll cut it off, kick it to the side, and expose a new margin, a, a new margin of the unexposed film negative, which is still registered perfectly. Do that meticulously, and then kick it to the side as well. Um, and then and at the end, you know, you put all the pieces together, and we'll have a coherent panoramic snapshot of the scene as it was optically perceived to our human perception. That's amazing. <laughs> it's just some sort of prize or something. <laughs> A scientific and artistic prize. So the yeah. Oh, that's interesting. We're both left-handed. I figured you'd both be left-handed. You, you guys are left-handed? You're the smart Are one. you married? <laughs> Don't make the artist giggle. His line, his lines will move around. <laughs> Trevor, what made you decide to make all this what look like fractals all over the mirror, all over the space? Um, the, 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 the circular yes. mark, um, well, I needed a, a mark for shading, um, and I didn't, I really didn't want to use, like, traditional cross-hatching, um, because whatever I know, like, a lot of the, a lot of the early drawings, um, people would say, people would, would raise questions, they'd be like, why are you drawing this particular subject matter versus that particular subject matter, like, what is it about this external object in, in the real world? that speaks about your like artistic pursuit. And for us it was really like the act of looking that was the subject matter. Um, so we ended up um, one, like, I don't know, sort of just randomly um, or like, like very experimentally trying out th this like coiled circular mark um, 
to, um, to bring up shaded value for any given section. Um, and if all your resonated, um, resonated in terms of how we see the, the world for a number of reasons. One is that it, um, it kind of mimics the texture that you can see on your retina, um, the kind of electrical texture, like especially when you close your eyes, sort of like like visual noise or static in your brain. Um, so, uh, and then, so yeah, so for any for any section of the, of the drawing where it's mostly just a, a value, a shaded value, um, we decided to go ahead and use use this this texture to, to kind of say like it's the act of the eye looking out at, at physical space um, that that is the subject matter of drawings so maybe almost mimicking the um, shape of the eye or something yeah and and well it also it really it starts to mimic um so the physics of what light is doing when it hits the surface mm -hmm. um uh, I, I learned I learned recently that the the photon of light um only interacts with the electrons of, of atoms. Like a photon comes in and it sort of electromagnetically yeah. catches on, on the electron and um, boosts the electron up to outer orbit and presumably it spins around a few times and then drops back down to a lower orbit and tosses out the electron again. Um, I don't exactly know how to picture it, but like I, but I, I picture it kind of like a, dis, like a discus thrower that catches the discus and then um, the like, the, like centrifugal m momentum of the discus causes it to like swing out farther a little bit and then it, and then it gets like popped back down and it throws the discus off again at some at some new angle presumably um so this this coiled circular mark was also s reminiscent for, for me and ryan of that kind of of like the quantum activity that the, the photons of light are are, are are like interacting or are un undergoing as they as they like hit real matter and then bounce off of it. Um, so I don't know for a, for a number of so a, n a number of reasons it, it seemed to it just it seemed to resonate as like a mark that both talked about light and the act of looking and um, we, we end up uh, well, so we, we've done some drawings of um, of like the ocean horizon line where. This this circular mark can be used everywhere because there, there's really not much not much um, detail in the space. Um, but for, for drawings like this that have so many physical objects, we decided to also respect edges to like com completely, like the edge of a leaf or the edge of the tree trunk, edge of the trash can, ed edge of the building, anywhere that there's a physical edge in the world. We, we, we decided to, to respect that and not. Um, and and either just just bring the circles up so they stop on that edge, um, or if the edges are really small, like like on the leaves, to, to just sort of d define define the edges. Um, and I feel like that that also, for me, um, is this, it's like a seems like a sound a sound decision um, because I've heard that in your in your brain in your visual cortex, one of the first things your brain does is it is it, is it locates and finds the edges in the real world. Um, that's like. I've heard that from from a neurobiologist uh, talking about visual art. Um, so it's kind of I don't know. To, to me, it's kind of like like okay, if that, if that's the first thing your your brain is, is looking for. Then that that works as like an appropriate thing to honor. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, anywhere where, where there are no edges and it, and it's just like a, a, a gradation of, of light. Um, this this circular mark is kind of depicting that like. Um, bustling population of like, photon particles. Mm -hmm. Bustling population of photon particles. <laughs> Kids, I've never thought of that before. <laughs> I will now. Yes. So would you like to introduce yourself and say hello? Sure. <laughs> Let me back up just a little bit. Cool. Okay, and uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and what we've been filming here today.